So it all, it all informs the work. You know, so I'm a, 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 I'm, I'm a kind of um, you're a, a, a bastard graphic designer. You can a bastard. I'm a rogue. You know, right? so I can do, I can do what I like. So, so I don't fit in. development for a museum yes. but um, it's been a wonderful thing to do because every time I've gone down to Peter's studio the, the works have changed slightly so it's wonderful to see them develop and I think the last year has been um, a concentrated period for the work so I've seen quite a lot of changes which is wonderful. Is it exciting now seeing them all up properly in the gallery? Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> More of a relief, maybe. Yes. Well, you have an idea of it in your head how it will look. Yeah. And uh, then it's lovely to kind of come in and see, see it all work how you wanted it to, and then the colours are right and then the text is, is good. So for us, that was fantastic. But more importantly, obviously, we just wanted to do justice to Peter's work because it's such fantastic images. And we uh, wanted to make sure that you know, the visitors could enjoy it as much as possible. They're quite intimate, small works, and you definitely need to get up close and have a look at them and read the text and understand them. So that was, we were very keen to make sure that that was easy to do in the space. Explaining how you came around to starting. Yeah, um, the, the initial um, the initial interest was that I was um, a student at the Royal College of Art in 1953, and that was the year of Dylan's death. And, and the next 54 was the first reading of Hunter Mountain. And there were, uh, uh, by chance, there were a lot of more students at the college at that point, and, and a lot of them. And did paintings about under Milford, so that was my first introduction to it. So I knew some of the characters, and I knew I knew who they were painting about. And then it became just one of the books I was interested in, but I, you know, I maintained an interest in it. And then some years later, um, I have a friend called Mike Mitchell, but that. Um, and he was a dentist, in fact, but his, his, great, his great interest was, was private press publishing. And so we were going to publish a book, and I started them as really great ones, and became involved, and then it went on from there, and I became more and more involved, and it went on until, uh, I mean, this year, I had, you know, and we decided that the book should come out. So, so I put two deadlines on it, so one three months ago for the book and then the second one. Well, I was work last Monday I was working on Sunday night to three on Monday morning. <laughs> Picked up on Monday to come. So I worked on it this morning. And so what is it about Dylan Thomas and his work that It's good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's, it, it's a fascinating... <coughs> It's an almost unique form of writing because it's, it was written, it's not a book, it's <coughs> intended to be a book. <coughs> it was intended as a, as a radio play, so it then, it then was, was printed as a book. And, and it's, it's very kind of free form poetry, so it's almost a unique way of writing. And it refers, I mean, later on, people like Jack Kerouac wrote, wrote on the road in, in the same kind of way. So, um, and it's wonderful poetry, I mean, just like the lines of poetry. I was reading it in some of the PR that's not here as well, that you listen to it twice a week. Um, 
yeah. at least, yeah. I mean, twice a day something. I mean, at the height of doing that, when I was doing the collages in my studio, I would just play it all day. I put it on and listen to it. Because so, you know, when I was working, I wasn't actually listening to it. All day. I was having fun. And I also noticed that, so you, it's one of the photos that you use actually wanted to do a lot. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, well, what's, what's interesting about that trip is that Mike um, eventually <coughs> we worked out. In, in, I started the work and, and, I, and I began to kind of imagine what the coronation hall might be like or what the various streets. And then Mike said, well, let's go to Lark because it's based on this particular town. Let's go there, take some photographs, and then you can work from the photograph. So three times we organised to go. And three times I think he had to cancel or I did. And eventually we said, look, let's go next Thursday. And neither of us cancelled. Let's just let's go and do it. So on a completely random day we went down on October 25th, 1986. And we I, I went and stayed with Mike in, in Barbara and we drove down the next day. We went in the Browns Hotel <coughs> and there was a film crew there. And I thought, well, that's probably not that unusual, so I was invited here. And they said, well, Caitlin is in town, you know, from Dylan Thomas's widow. She hadn't been back to the town since she left the town 30 years before, when, when Dylan died. And she was back, she'd written a book about me, and she was back to do a sign with her daughter, with, with her own with her daughter. And they were across the road in, in George Jones. So we went across, and, and I, I took my photographs of the town, and I took some photographs of Caitlin and the Ron, and, and we talked to her, and it was just an amazing coincidence. Face, face, face. Well, I mean, 30 years, and it happens to be that day, and she, and she wouldn't have gone back since. Yeah. Um, so do you to, have... Except to be buried. Yeah. Do you have a, a favourite piece of your collection? Um, It'd be, it'd be hard to choose a favourite one. I, I have a soft spot for Reli, the Reverend Eli Jenkins, because I think it was the first one. Because when, when you went, once I'd gone beyond doing them as wood engravings, you hadn't worked out the form. You know, um, I then worked out um, yes, I, that you know, Mike could set it up in that letterpress. So, so they were done to that form. You know, so, so there was the width of the column of, of, of print. And, and this, there were small ones which were, which were portrait shaped, and there were bigger ones which were um, land, yeah, um, small ones which were landscape, small ones, uh, bigger ones which were portrait. And, that, and so once I worked out, out the shape, that was the first one I actually started. So I think I have a soft spot for that. Um, so you've been kind of pegged as the godfather of pop-up. Do you think pop art um, works for something that works with Daniel Dunn? It doesn't necessarily do. I mean, there's an enormous reinterest in pop art at the moment. Yeah. Especially, especially, oddly enough, British pop art. Yeah, because for many years, um, most people didn't kind of accept that it existed. You know, they, they talk about what they meant to start with American pop art. And suddenly it's found its pop art place. So, but that's, it's, it's running parallel. I mean, there are crossovers because the same person did the work. But, but, but the, the, I don't think there's very much in the exhibition that you would, would come under the, that, the heading of pop up as yeah. such. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was also wondering when you first you always been a part of your life or was no, it, it was um, it, it was chance really. But when the Second World War started, I was seven, and I was evacuated most of the war. We came back in 1945 from the two evacuations to Essex, and um, had a, got a place um, in the technical school in Gravesend. And my dad was the electrician, so I probably would have gone towards the building trade. And um, went for the interview, um, and at the interview, one of the interviewers said, um, if you were interested in art, you know, the art school as part of the technical school, you could just um, go along the road and do a, a drawing examination and go to art school. So I thought that sounds interesting. So I did, I went and did the drawing examination, got into the art school, 
um, and then it, it, it becomes a long story. But, but, but I then um, went there in 1935. It was a junior occupier, so you had to finish your art education. So, I, so in the mornings we go to the technical school, and then the afternoons to the art school. So really, I started at that age. No, 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 no. Why don't you look around? I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.